Hi, this is Sean Chua. Welcome back to SimpleChemConcepts.com. Today we're going to discuss about redox reactions. Now, redox reaction is a very important concept in both basic and advanced chemistry levels and even up to tertiary in universities. Now, at the end of this video, you're going to learn how to define redox reaction as well as how to determine whether a chemical reaction is actually a redox reaction or not. Now, uh, there are four methods to see whether a substance has been oxidized or reduced. Let's take a look at the board and see how we use them to decide. Now, the first method is through the gain and loss or loss of oxygen atoms. Now, the gain of oxygen atoms is known as oxidation process, whereby the loss of oxygen atoms will be known as um, a reduction process. So if you take a look at this example they have uh, quoted here, magnesium actually reacts with copper 2 oxide in the presence of heat to form magnesium oxide and copper metal. Now if you take a look at this reaction, what happened is magnesium, this atom, has uh, gained oxygen atom from copper 2 oxide to form magnesium oxide. All right? So magnesium has been oxidized. Let me use a square uh, bracket and O to represent oxidation. So magnesium has been oxidized to magnesium oxide because it had gained oxygen atoms. And copper 2 oxide will then be reduced since it loses oxygen atom to form copper metal itself. So this chemical reaction will be a redox reaction in terms of gain and loss of oxygen atoms. All right. Now let's take a look at the second uh, method. Is the gain and loss or loss of hydrogen atoms? Now, um, in this case, the gain of hydrogen atoms will then be known as reduction, whereas the loss of hydrogen atoms will be known as oxidation. It's kind of opposite that of oxygen atoms. All right. Now the example I've quoted here is hydrogen sulfide H2S plus chlorine gas gives you sulfur and hydrogen chloride. So if you take a look over here. H2S, or hydrogen sulfide, uh, loses hydrogen atoms to become sulfur. So from here to here, all right, it loses hydrogen atoms. So this is oxidation process, whereby chlorine gains hydrogen atoms to form hydrogen chloride. So this will then be reduction process. So since oxidation and reduction uh, process occurs simultaneously in this chemical reaction, this chemical reaction will then be known as a redox reaction also. All right? So these two are quite easy now. But these two methods are not the best uh, because not every chemical reaction, all right? When you look at the chemical equations, they involve the gain or loss of oxygen and hydrogen atoms. So in some cases, in fact, in a lot of cases, you cannot use these two methods. So we're going to take a look at method 3 and 4, whereby it is more universal, I would say, because you can actually use these two methods all right, to determine whether a chemical reaction is redox reaction or not in almost all instances. All right. So uh, it just needs a bit of skills and a bit of strategies in order to do so. Now, let's take a look at this method, okay, known as gain or loss of uh, electrons. Now, uh, this is a metal displacement reaction. So zinc um, displaces copper out from copper to sulfate solution to form zinc sulfate solution and copper. Now, in order to uh, work out whether this reaction is redox, uh, meaning whether is there a substance that has been oxidized and another substance that has been reduced, uh, you need to do a few steps, all right? Now, first, you need to know uh, and make sure that the equation is balanced and you have the correct state symbols, all right? Then next, you need to uh, get the ionic equation. Uh, in, in order to do so, you need to uh, so-called cancel the spectator ions. These are ions that does not take part in uh, the chemical reaction and we can cancel it, all right? So there are some steps uh, and the most important I think is to make sure that they are equal species all right? and then you look at the left and right side of the arrow of the reaction equation to see whether there is uh, similar ions there this will be your spectator ions and in this case will be your sulfate ions 
All right, so I'll use black color marker to cancel it out. So what will be your ionic equation? I call it IE in short, all right? It will be whatever that you did not cancel off. Okay, let me write this down. This will then be your ionic equation, okay? Now, and in an ionic equation, it's always made up of two halves. One is called the reduction half. The other one will be known as the oxidation half. All right. So let me use a red color over here to show which is oxidized and which is reduced. Maybe I'll do that later. All right. You can take a look at on your own. Now, uh, what I'm going to do right now is using the other equation. I'm going to break them up into two half equations. Very simple. How we do that? Uh, can I just put one? This is the first half. Maybe I'll just put uh, just to make sure it's a bit different. All right. This one. Okay. And then uh, just. Choose the element, all right, that looks the same or the similar to put them in the same uh, line. So in this case, I would have this, and in the next one, I would have this. Okay, your next job is to put in the electrons, all right. So zinc, when it forms zinc 2 plus, all right, it must have given out two electrons. Whereas copper 2 plus must have gained two electrons to form copper metal. All right? So in this case, okay, there is a, a strategy that we use uh, for us to remember. It's more like an acronym, all right? It's known as um, an oil rig. It's known as oil rig of electron. Oil rig of electron. So oil refers to oxidation is lost, whereby rig is known as reduction is gain of what? Of electrons. So anything that loses uh, electron will be known as oxidation. Anything that gains electrons will be known as reduction. So zinc loses electron. It will thus be oil oil is oxidation. Whereby copper two plus ions gains electrons, so it's rig R I G. So it will be reduction over here. All right. So since both oxidation and reduction occur simultaneously in this reaction known as metal displacement reactions, this will therefore be a redox reaction. All right. Now let's look at number four. Okay. Number four is my favorite. Okay. I'm going to put an asterisk here because uh, this method is very very simple. Can be used in all uh, cases, all instances, all chemical reactions. All right, to determine whether a chemical reaction is a redox reaction. And then it just involves some basic math manipulation once you have some uh, so-called fixed rules. All right? Now, let's take a look back on the board uh, and have some fixed rules regards to oxidation states. Another word for it is oxidation numbers. Uh, to see how we use method 4 all right, to determine whether a chemical reaction is a redox reaction. All right, so let's come back to the board. I'm going to use this side. Hope you can see me, all right? So over here, uh, there are some fixed uh, oxidation state rules, I would say, okay? So once we are done, we can then play uh, with the math, all right, and then to solve it, okay? So uh, fixed oxidation rules number one, all right, is that all three elements, all three elements, they will have oxidation state equals to zero. Now, who are these three elements? We are talking about all the metals in the periodic table. We are talking about your group 7 halogens, all right, like chlorine, fluorine, all these diatomic molecules. We are talking about your group 0 or your group 8, uh, noble gases, the argon, the xenon, the krypton. All right. uh, we are also looking at some elemental uh, gases itself. The common gases uh, that we know since young, like hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas. All right, these three. Some metals like carbon. Uh, sulfur, right? All these will have uh, oxidation state of zero. These are known as your free elements, all right? Now, next will be um, will be the fact that a, a compound, all right, in a compound, compound, all right, has uh, zero charge. It is a neutral uh, species, right? Compound. Uh, in a compound, all the atoms, right? All the atoms, when you add up the OS, all right? Will all atoms uh, OS add up? Will also be equal to zero. Is I follow the charge of the compound, right? This is the second rule that I need to know. And the third one, I will just use this space here. Okay. Uh, the third one is uh, there are some other fixed rule like in a compound, right? 
maybe I'll use the space here, okay? Now, in a compound, in a compound, all right, uh, number three, all your group one, or your group one metals in a compound, right? We have oxidation state equals to plus one, is fixed, all right? And then number four, all your group two metals, the oxidation state is fixed to be plus two. It's like it follows the charges, all right? Follow the charges um, of the metal ions, all right? Number five is your group seven, your halogens or your halides, right? When they are in a compound, your group seven or group seven, their oxidation state is not fixed. Take note, is variable uh, except fluorine. All right, except fluorine, whereby the oxidation state is equals to minus one. All right, this is kind of fixed. Now, uh, maybe I give you an example so that you know uh, better. All right, so I'm going to just use a small space here. Now, uh, let's use chlorine as the halogen uh, for discussion. Now, sodium chloride has chlorine inside there. There's another compound called NaClO also has chlorine inside there. But if you look at oxidation states, they are different, all right? Sodium, as we mentioned over here, all group one metals, OS is plus one, so this is plus one. Chlorine over here will be minus one. But if you look at the other example, sodium plus one, oxygen we'll take a look later, is always minus two most of the time. Chlorine over here will then be what? Will then be plus one. And this shows you that uh, the oxidation states uh, variable, all right, for chlorine, for most of your group seven halogens, all right, uh, except fluorine. Once again, fluorine OS will be minus one. Next, uh, we will have the, uh, your hydrogen, all right, hydrogen in a compound, their OS is usually plus one, except when they are in peroxides, or rather. Let me use this, all right, except in uh, metal hydrides, okay, we have set in metal hydrides, whereby the OS will then be equals to minus one. Okay, I'm going to give you an example once again, I'm going to just use the small space here. Um, your hydrogen in water and hydrogen in sodium hydride, all right, both of them exist, all right. Uh, hydrogen over here is plus one oxidation state, but hydrogen there is not plus one anymore because sodium is plus one, and this compound exists. So hydrogen is minus one. All right. So I have shown you hydrogen is always uh, OS plus one except metal hydrides. The OS is minus one. Last but not least, let us finish up here. Will be your oxygen. Okay, oxygen in a compound. The OS is uh, minus two except in peroxides, right, whereby it is minus one, the OS is equals to minus one, all right, so example once again, okay, will be say water, and then the peroxide will be the common one, hydrogen peroxide, now, uh, over here, hydrogen is plus one, oxygen therefore is minus two here, all right, but in peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, each of the hydrogen atom has plus one OS. So you do the math, all right, oxygen here will then be minus one, all right? So it's different in peroxides, okay? Now, so we are good with these fixed rules. Once you're okay with that, it's going to be quite easy because that will allow you to solve uh, all the questions using OS and see whether a chemical reaction is a redox reaction or not, all right? So let's use this side, right? I'm going to use red color for now. So potassium, as we mentioned, in this reaction, uh, which is a halogen displacement reaction, potassium is plus one, all right, it's a group one, so iodine inside here will be minus one. Chlorine, Cl2 is a free element per atom, the oxidation state will be zero. Potassium is plus one, chlorine is minus one here, iodine free element again is zero. So we take a look over here, all right, um, for potassium there's no change, but for iodine, it has changed from minus one to zero in terms of oxidation state. So since there's increase in the oxidation state, this is known as oxidation process. 
But by chlorine, if you take a look from here to here, there's a decrease in the OS, in the oxidation state. So this is known as reduction, right? So in this reaction, it's also a redox reaction since both oxidation and reduction processes are involved simultaneously. Okay, so uh, this is um, the end of the video. I hope you enjoy yourself. Signing off, this is Sean Chua from simplechemconcepts.com again. And I'd like to see you in the next video. Take care.